Kiki? Uh, I have two things that I'm pretty sure are the same thing. And it's perfect because you're talking about wanting everyone to like me. Um, so in my business, uh, it's going really well. Um, and in the in-person side of my business, I'm really clear on what to do. I'm just going to go to all the events that I can locally. I went to this business expo that wasn't my niche or target audience at all and still got already one client out of it and probably more coming. Um, but online, I feel kind of lost as to what to do each day. And I, I know, I kind of know my niche, but I kind of don't, like it's very obvious, my favorite clients the, and the clients I have the most fun working with, they get the best results. And also the majority of them that come to me are women in their thirties who are dealing with relationship challenges, but they're not all dealing with relationship challenges. And so I'm kind of resisting getting super specific. Although just tonight I kind of had an idea of how, like that I'd, I'd love to get as specific as saying, cause three of my favorite of those clients all were dealing with um, their ex, like trying to let go of their ex. And we've done really great work around that. And it's been really, the changes for them have been awesome. So I was thinking, well, what if it was as simple or as clear as saying, uh, I help women get over their ex. Yeah. That would be really, really clear. And everybody would know either, oh, I want to look at that more or I don't want to look at that more, which would make marketing really easy. Um, but I'm resisting that. And I'm not entirely sure why. I'm resisting that. And then something that came up at work the other night was that I still have some energy around uh, money isn't spiritual. What's, I don't know why Karina's doing this. Uh, still have some energy around money, making money isn't spiritual. Okay. And I was shocked by that, but it just, it came up in a flash and I realized that there's something around that. So I think it's connected to like, it, you know, what we worked on last time is too easy. So it's too easy. Like I help women get over their exes. That's too easy making money is spiritual. So they all kind of seem to, yeah. Okay. If you decide to tell everyone that that's what you do and you like, you help women with your exes, are you cutting off all the clients that don't need help with their exes or have other issues more important than their exes? Yeah. Okay. Are you willing to destroy that belief? <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> that was my arms that you want to save the whole world. <laughs> uh oh, I thought you were celebrating how clear, how yeah. clear my business description got. I was like, <laughs> also that. So I'll, I'll tell you right now, if, if you just restrict your business to women that are trying to get over their exes, your audience will be very, very tiny. Only about half a billion people I'm estimating. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's just, you know, that's, I know it's a very small niche audience there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm also a little bit worried because some of the other favorite clients mm -hmm. don't really like they, they, for example, they didn't sign up for my courses to get over their exes. Yeah. So then I'm wondering, I guess my fear is that I'm, that I'm, I'm, I'm pushing away or like, yeah, that I'm pushing away some of my favorite clients because some clients of them signed up for the current ones. Yeah. Okay. So will they stop being your favorite clients just because you're, you decided that's how you're going to promote yourself? They still know what you do. They still know they can come to you for anything. The current ones, but what about all the all the potential future ones? That well, you like, were just talking about your favorite awesome. clients. Are you talking about the future favorite clients as well, or just like? Well, like some of them are, are my favorite clients now, but like that type of woman is yeah. is my ideal client. So I'd love to just have more and more of those types of women, but only really three of them are dealing with issues with their ex. Okay. Okay. So the belief that any decision you make to create a niche limits your audience in ways you don't want. Are you willing to destroy that? Uh, 
that any decision I make to, to create a niche limit by options. It just feels like it's true though. If people resonate with you, they're going to find you. If you believe that, uh, that creating that ideal client and, and marketing to that ideal client is going to limit your business instead of grow your business, that's exactly the result you're going to get. Now, whenever you get a, whenever you get a client and they started working with you, you can always say, this is what I'm advertising, but I can also do this. Then that opens them up. That also op allows them to recommend other people to you that have other issues. But when people are looking for you, they're going to do specific searches. Yes. And the less you target your audience, the less people are going to be able to find you. That's just how it works. <laughs> <laughs> like going against everything you believe here. It's like, ah. <laughs> Well, it's not, it's like, it's, it's going again, it's going with everything I've ever learned about business, especially yep. small business and the importance yep. of being specific and niching. Yep. And yet it just is making my skin crawl and I'm not entirely sure why. Are you, are you, do you feel like you're forcing yourself into a box you don't want to be in? Yeah, but not, not that I authentically don't want to be in it it's more like it's more like uh because I, I love doing work you know i'm i'm planning in my mind a workshop on god because yeah. it's something i'm really passionate about and I, that i've had really great energy clearings on and i want to create a whole thing about it yeah so if i niche down specific to helping women get over their exes yeah. then i feel like people would be very confused if i go and put on a workshop about god so I, yeah, but, but I also feel the energy of me not niching and get, getting specific yeah. is, is cutting off my money flows, frankly. Like I, I feel like I could do six months or 12 months or however long, I don't know, of specific niching, go make a buttload of money helping a lot of amazing people, yeah. and then I could do all the God workshops I want. Like, or I could do it in tandem. At this, I, yeah, so okay. I, there's also I feel... So it yeah. sounds like you've got a bunch of possibilities that you can, you, that you can access. Yeah. So if you, if you have all sorts of possibilities you can access, why are you feeling like you're stuck and restricted? I don't know. I, Do you I, have to get it right? Yeah. Okay. Are you willing to destroy the belief that you have to get it right, right now? Yes. <laughs> and I think a, a big chunk of that energetically is, is just holding on to some of the past of being a life coach. Mm -hmm. I'll let you finish the yawn. Uh, being a life coach so many times and kind of arbitrarily picking a niche, you know, just yep. I'd work with one client about money management and be like, I'm going to be a money management coach and then tell everybody my life. And then I would do that for three weeks or four weeks and get my wife all on board and everything. And then I'd not do that. Yep. So even though now it's a completely different world, I, st I feel like, I want to, I feel like I don't want to declare a niche or say a niche okay. until I know that I've already had like a hundred clients and then I can say it because it's, it's the being right thing, but it's, there's something else to it. There's like, I don't know. I just like, I just can't handle going through all that again, <laughs> really like okay. getting, yeah. So are you trying not to declare a niche to stay away from that past, those past experiences that you had? Yeah, the past failures, because it tanked every time. Okay. So and if I stay in this world of like kind of airy fairy, not defined, I seem to be having way more success than I ever used to when I had a defined. That's what it is. When I had defined niches, I sucked. When I've kept it general, yeah. I have clients. So I'm like, Ooh. 
Okay. So everything you're doing to avoid repeating your past experiences, are you willing to destroy them? Yes. <laughs> The thing is, if your business is working right now, you don't actually have to do the niche thing. You can play with the niche thing, experiment with it. But if if your business is growing and you're having fun with it and it's expanding, then just keep doing what you're doing. It's up to you. It is. It is expanding, but I also know that I I know that with the caliber of what I'm doing and the responses that I'm getting, yeah. I am like poised on that you know, doing just certain things online with a specific niche, for example, would okay. take me just like, I feel like this is just going to explode. Okay. And you it's going to be, explode. I, yes, I, I, I do. I've, yeah, I do. Okay. What's going to happen to your life if this explodes? Um, I would be able to... Oh, I can only see good things. Like I would be able to focus on just energy work and I would... I could create the business model that I want to create and time freedom, more time freedom. And okay. That didn't come up. Yeah. True. I, yeah. Would you, okay. So Which true, one? would you actually have more time, time and freedom if it, if the business exploded? Yes. Would you be able to handle all the women coming to you with their, problems with their exes and not have to turn anyone away. Oh. <laughs> yeah, actually. They okay, now yeah, that's that's hitting more on it because I do give a fair amount of like not I wouldn't say too much, but a fair amount of personalized service with yeah. with all the pe with all my current clients. Yep. So I'm able to respond to their personal Facebook messages and I'm able to respond to text messages and, and extra emails. I don't take a lot of time on it, but I, you know, I respond to pretty much everything. So, so truth, but if I had a hundred clients every month. Yeah. So truth, are you trying to minimize your business so you can give enough personalized attention to the people you have? Yes. Okay. So the belief that that's what you need to do and the belief that that's the only way people will keep coming to you, are you willing to destroy that? Ow. <laughs> yes. <coughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, because it's not quite the, the wanting people to like me that came up with um, Carmela just before. It's, but it's similar, but it's not exactly the same. So I think it's more that about people needing personalized attention. Yep. But you're going to find when you, when you get into bigger groups, one person's going to say something and you're going to work on that issue. And it's going to resonate with so many other people in the group that you don't actually need to give all the personalized attention. And if people okay. want one-on-one -on -one sessions, your, your time's going to get booked up, but you still, it's your choice to book time for yourself, vacation time for yourself. And if there ends up being like a three week waiting list to see you, people really want your services. They're going to sign up for a three week waiting list. It's just how it works. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. <sighs> Better, worse, cool. same or different. Uh, Better and kind of disjointed, but I, okay. I, that's, that's all going to sort itself out. So, yeah, okay. thank you. Welcome. Hey, this is Shiraz. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you liked it, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And you can check out upcoming events at www.energeticmagic.com. And remember, be well, be aware, and be magical.